folks, welcome back. Vintage stock time again. We made it over here to the independent store today. Um, saw Gamester 81 was out in my neck of the woods. He'd been out to the Blue Springs uh, vintage stock and uh, he got their permission to go in and shoot around. So he was shooting some footage in there and stuff, but um, don't know what he picked up or uh, or any of that because I didn't watch the whole video because frankly I've been in that store so I don't need to uh, see what they got because I just saw it. But uh, thought we'd cruise in here, uh, see what they have, and uh, maybe make a purchase or two. Uh, gonna keep it lean today, folks. I'm gonna try to keep it under like 10, 15 bucks max. I'm one of those people that you can't keep their hand out of the cookie jar. You know, you gotta keep looking for games and buying games. But we're gonna cruise in and uh, see what they got, and maybe pick something up. So let's check it out. Mitch, me, me, football, but he about $15. I just can't pay $15 for it. I keep hoping I'll find it. If I'm gonna pay $15, I want it in the box. JBC XI. I can't tell how much they want for it. I think they want 60, 59 or something. Not sure. Tell you the truth, I can't remember even what it plays. So. Gentlemen, ladies, welcome back, folks. I uh, made it back from the vintage stock, picked up a couple items. Uh, it's nothing major, uh, kind of a couple of impulses. And when I was driving home, I started thinking of a question that I kind of want to put to y'all nothing big um, just uh, when I was driving home I got to thinking you know did I really need what I bought and you know was it worth spending the money I gotta kind of pick and choose right now and my question came to me um, how how apt are you to spend the dollar folks how apt are you to buy stuff when you really can't afford it. I personally am one of those guys that if I don't have the cash in my wallet, the physical money, the moolah, I don't, I don't buy it. There are exceptions, and I mean, of course, there's exceptions. There's always exceptions, you know. And that was led to part two of my question. Part one is, are you apt to spend money uh, even if you don't really have it uh, because you get the itch or you just had a bad day and you want to go spend some money and maybe what you picked up isn't even really that special it's just it just made you feel good in the moment and um, you know you might regret it later you know I'm not saying that you do but you know what I'm saying I'm one of those people that I rarely if ever um, will dip out of my comfort zone and and that was part two of my question was um, you know, how apt are you maybe to uh, spend a little bit of dough, even though you know it might put you kind of tight? Maybe you won't be eating the $6 uh, hearty burger for lunch. You'll be eating the dollar double cheeseburger but for the week. But you know, God damn it, you want that game or that, you know, whatever it is. And you know if you cut back here and there, it might not be as cool. It might not be what you're used to. But, 
you know, if you don't do it, if you don't go ahead and pick this item up, it's going to be gone, and you know it. So you go ahead and tighten the belt just to buy it. I want to know what items people have bought, even though they had to cut back until their next check or whatever, uh, just because they knew if they didn't buy it that day, they weren't going to see another one forever, or uh, they weren't, you know, going to be able to find one again for that price. Uh, okay, we got uh, two games, and we got one a uh, little uh, little uh, candy dispenser. I couldn't help myself. Um, we spent about twenty bucks, maybe a little over, more like twenty five. Who am I kidding? Um, but uh, the first thing I picked up was one of these candy uh, dispensers. Um, it's kind of like the one that Vidium got me a, long, a while back, sent me in the mail. Yeah, we got Fire Mario up here, and he's standing on the on the barrel. This one is just regular old Mario in his normal overalls and stuff, <clears throat> but he's kind of the same same dude. So I figured we put him up there and let uh, the Mario brothers, so to speak, uh, stand next to each other. Mario clones, I guess. <clears throat> so let me take a drink of my iced tea. Okay. Next thing, uh, for folks, um, picked up a no clipper. It's been a long time since we've talked about the no clips, and uh, that's because it got kind of scarce around here. I happened to find one today uh, that I've been needing. I don't know how many I have left, but I had about, I know I had under 20 left I needed to get, and I know I still need a Mega Man, which I guess is one of the hardest ones, but <clears throat> what I picked up was four bucks. And I picked up a no-clip copy of Goonies 2. The only Goonies 2 I'd ever seen no-clip at any of these stores. Um, the whole front of the label was ripped off. And uh, I wasn't going to buy that. Today we got a couple little dimples right there out of the label. Uh, and kind of a, it's kind of a little dirty. It might be cleanable. But... Um, it's definitely uh, in way better shape than any of the ones I had seen, and it's a no clipper. So this one I was actively really uh, stands out. I know I need Castlevania, and I still need Mega Man 2. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. I think I need like Legend of Cage and about ten other little ones that I don't can't think of offhand. That was not my impulse buy. That one I was like four dollars, no problem. Uh, like I said, the label is just barely got a couple little little dings, but at least it's got the end label on it. Sorry, I'm chewing my fingernail while I'm talking. Um, this is the one that I went and bought, and it's not in the awesomest of shape, but I couldn't pass it up. I went ahead and picked up a copy, folks, of an inbox that is complete, uh, Ocarina of Time. And this box has been crushed. You, you can see it's got some crushing here. Uh, this flap is a little torn. <coughs> Excuse me. But all in all, it's in okay shape. Uh, the instruction book is in here. Uh, it's been used. It's got some folding on the cover, but it's complete. And that's cool. And then the game itself is a gray cart copy but I have a gold copy that I'd probably put in the box so today we got Ogreen of Time a complete box version of Ogreen of Time it was $16.99 it's not in the greatest of shape but I haven't seen a box Ogreen of Time in forever and it's one of the only 64 games that I'd be willing to pony up for uh, I mean, really spend some cash to get a decent quality uh, box copy. But for $16.99, uh, I'm okay with it. It did come with the directions. And like I said, I have a gold card copy that I, I may have shown you all. I don't know if I did a 64 collection or not. And, uh, <clears throat> and we're going to put it in the box. Uh, the box, the front and the back, I mean, the back especially is in really good shape. It's not torn up. Uh, the flaps... Are a little worked and the front was looks like it may have been crushed along this edge but 
you know, this one was one that after I bought it, I was like, did I really need to spend sixteen ninety nine on that, Adam? In the condition that it's in, you know, I mean, it's not it's not god awful, but you know, they want sixteen ninety nine for the uh, cart only. So I mean, this was complete for sixteen ninety nine. But then again, I already had a copy of it, so you know, whatever. But anyway, folks, um, I'm gonna sign off. Uh, that was where my two little pickups and my candy dispenser and uh, a couple of questions I had that were rolling through my brain on the way home. I tried to film it on the way home, but my battery gave out. So I'm going to sign off. I'll try to put a little store footage, or you probably already saw it. <laughs> put some store footage on here, and uh, we'll roll. Uh, thanks for coming by, and uh, let me know on those questions, folks. Uh, you know, what's the one thing that you bought that you... Uh, eight cheese sandwiches for a week, you know, to go ahead and buy it. So, signing off. Talk to you later. Bye.